Hey guys, it's not here again. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back to another video. That was a great start. Um, and welcome back to another commentary. And this time I'm gonna bring you guys something a little more new. And this is going to be a wishlist series for Need for Speed 2015. Uh, and this is basically gonna work like uh, I'm gonna, you know, generate a random topic to talk about and give the developers ideas. So, say for example, we'll talk about the multiplayer. Uh, basically, what role all drive should play in multiplayer if they do have uh, all drive as a return uh, customization for everything uh, I'm just gonna have that uh, as a topic every now and then you guys will see a different topic every time and this time I'm starting with progression probably the most crucial uh, you know option for a racing game you know one of the most crucial f features really for a racing game is the progression system that's one thing that Need for Speed has been lacking as of late so I'm going to give uh, I'm gonna give you guys my two cents about this so uh, yeah let's get into the video alright guys so starting off uh, we have the starter car example so this is gonna be basically some examples on what the starter cars should be so I'm just gonna give you guys examples so we see we saw the Nissan 180SX in the trailer, and that's what a starter car should be. It should be a lower end car that, you know, it's kind of a pile of junk, really, and you just progressively level that up, or you start buying better cars, and I'll get into that later on. So these are just a couple of exam examples, is the Nissan 180SX, um, 1969 Dodge Charger, 1986 Toyota Corolla, and the Audi A3. So, those are just some examples about, you know, what this, what some examples of starter cars should be. I mixed in some European, Asian, and American cars in there, so, you know, sort of get a good feel about what a starter car should be um, at a start of a Need for Speed game, or start of a, at a start of any Need for Speed, or, ah, at the start of any racing game, really. Um, so, yeah. Alright, so now the next thing is over time start unlocking cars slightly better than before. So, what I mean by this is look at some old Need for Speeds, for example. I know this is going to be their own take on Need for Speed. They're completely rebooting the series. But this is just a good example of, you know, some of the progression features that they should probably implement into the game. Uh, so, say for example, like I said, I bought a 180SX to start off the game. Um, you know, I'm just doing some really, really, like, easy no not easy races but you know races with some other lower end cars and I progressively move up the ladder in the progression system so after I defeat you know one boss one of the starting bosses I unlock some better cars so now this is the point where you know I start unlocking better cars say for example I unlock a golf GTI a um, you know just some up and tier cars uh, I don't have any examples off the top of my head, but then as you start moving up, you'll see some Scion FRSs, you'll see even some, you know, higher end like Jaguars and, and Aston Martins, and then you go up to the top, you know, near the end of the progression system, and you'll see your Lamborghini Murcielagos, and you'll see your tricked out uh, Rocket Bunny uh, um, Japanese cars, you know, you'll see some of those, and you'll be able to unlock all of them. Once you start like moving up the list, and um, you know, once you're at the end of the game, you have you know some of the fastest cars in the game. So that's pretty much how unlocking cars um, through the progression system should work, or how I think it should work anyway. But yeah, now we're gonna start moving on to the different tiers of performance parts. All right, so if you do, I'm pretty sure you will have performance and customization parts. It's it's 100%. It should be confirmed. I think it is confirmed. But, either way, um, you know, at the beginning of the game, you don't have any performance options, but if you say, for example, you beat the first boss, or, you know, you're, like, between 5 and 10% of the completion of the game, you start unlocking these parts. So, the first option should be street parts, where it kind of, you know, soups up your ride just a little bit, and then, as you progress further and further, you unlock maybe, you know, um, pro parts, and then you go to ultimate parts, and then uber parts, you know, it should be, like, um, each level should impact your car even more and more and more. 
to the point where, you know, it can match up against your Mercy Lagos. You know, so say for example, you still have your 180SX and you decide not to unlock or not to buy any other cards in the game, you just slightly you know level up that 180sx as they're progressing through and who knows you maybe you could beat a mercy lago with your tricked out 180sx i mean how cool does that sound it just it brings you back to the old need for speeds where you can actually do that you know uh by taking like your rx7s or your rx8s through the story and beating some higher end like tier 3 cars so like you could beat anything like a audi r8 or a lamborghini gallardo you know um so yeah and along with the performance parts you should be unlocking crazier and crazier body mods um because you know there's obviously going to be customization options so um you know you start off with some minor bot body options and like i said with the performance options you come up you uh, move up and up the ladder and you start unlocking crazier and crazier body kits so like you know, mid story to the end of the story, you start unlocking Rocket Bunny body kits like we saw in the trailer. That'd be really cool when you're progressing through. Uh, you just start unlocking those crazy, crazy just body customization options. Have like some, you know, weird stuff on your hood and have like some really low skirts and have like a tricked out rear bumper, tricked out front bumper. Have a huge spoiler at the end of your car, you know. That'd just be really cool and it would just. You know, it would seem like your ride is fast when you add those body options onto the car along with the performance options, so that would be pretty cool. Alright, so we move on to the lower end of the ladder now. We're getting kind of done with this video, we're wrapping it up just a little bit. And this is overtime, make event difficulties progressively harder. So, um, you start off and you're versing some other IS300s or Audi A3s at the beginning of the story, and then, you know, like I said, you beat that first boss, and then it ups the ante just a little bit. And what I mean by that is just a little bit is, like, you know, it probably adds in some ARC-7s and ARC-8s into the mix, you know, some slightly faster cars, and then you move up again. And this is where you're gonna start seeing some sports cars in there, you know, you're gonna see some Jaguar XKRs, um... Maybe not that far up the list already, but you know, you're gonna see some Corvette Stingrays possibly, and then you move up further on in the list and you'll see, you know, some Aston Martins, like I said, and then you move up to the top and you'll see some Lamborghinis that are gonna be battling and some Ferraris possibly. Um, so, yeah, that'd be pretty cool uh, when you're progressing through the story, you make event difficulties harder and harder, so have cops interfere in races a lot more. M maybe not as much as rivals because I ran into cops every damn race. <laughs> But I'm just saying, like, have the uh, cop difficulties near the end of the story be, like, you know, around 50%, so it's a 50-50 chance. And um, just have the AI be a little more tougher. Have them, you know, be, uh, have them have higher-end cars once you're progressing through. That's how progression works. And, um, yeah. And along with the event difficulties, if it does get tougher... Add in some higher cash rewards, you know. So at the beginning of the story, you get about you know a thousand, a thousand cash or a thousand speed points or whatever. Um, and then you move up further and further on, and you're gonna get some like at near the end of the story, you're gonna get like twenty thousand uh, credit, you know, um, cash rewards near the end of the story. Once that gets, once the races get harder and harder, and you're versing some higher end cars, you know, have that, uh, you know. Have it impact your income and possibly make those higher end cars more affordable so you can buy them when you're progressing through the story. Or, like I said, buy those higher end customization options like the performance and body parts to make your car look cooler and faster. But either way, this video is just under 10 minutes, just by a little bit. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I hopefully Ghost Jazz does see this video. I'm going to be tweeting it at them. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy, leave a like, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.